morning. Hello, Pat. Thank you, Pat. Morning, Alf. Hello, Pat. Granny Dryden's getting her pension at the post office. And uh, ten first-class stamps, please, Mrs Goggins. Oh, look. I do love the village fate. Do you know I've never missed one since I was a girl. Mind, it's not like the old times. Oh, no. Brass bands and drums, trumpets. Oh, but I hope there'll be some sort of music. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sure. My old dad, you know, he played the... Bless me, what did he play? I know he made a lovely sound, something big and boomy-like. I wonder whatever became of it. Here you are, Granny Dryden. Well, never mind. Now, Mrs Goggins, would you kindly ask Pat to be sure to pop in this afternoon? I will, I will. That attic of mine. You know, there's all sorts of things up there. I've been wanting to get it cleared out ever since that old chimney pot blew off. Hello, Granny Dryden. Morning, Peter. Hello, Pat. Hello, Peter. Look at this. I thought you'd given up that old guitar. Nay, I'm off to Pencaster to learn how to play it properly like. You never know, I might get on the telly with it. <laughs> it would be nice to play something. Something big and boomy. You're sounding cheerful today, said Mrs Goggins. It's the music in the air, said Pat. Music, said Miss Hubbard. That's what we need for a good fate. Now then, Reverend, do you think that old record player of yours could keep going long enough to churn out a few jolly old tunes? Oh, I think Ted'll be able to mend it. He's kept it going all these years. Oh, Pat, I nearly forgot. Granny Dryden asked if you'd pop in. Righto. Bye, Pat. I expect she's got something for the fate. Bye, all. Bye, Pat. It's time for Pat to be on his way. Morning, Granny Dryden. You've got two letters today. Oh, Pat, I'm glad you've come. There's some things in the attic and they'll be just right for the fate. You know, some old hats and dressmakers' dummies and things. Could you climb up and have a look? Me old legs, you know, they're too wobbly for that ladder. They'll be there somewhere. Now, mind how you go. Let's have a look. Up we go. Do be careful, Pat. Hmm. It's a bit dark up here. I won't be able to see a thing. Hmm. Where do I start? What's in here? Ah, a torch. And it works. Right now, down to business. Oh dear, what a jumble. Just like my granddad's hat. Must have been here since I was a lad. 
Hmm, stylish. <laughs> I like that. What's over here? A chair. A coffee pot and kettle. Boxes and tubs. I say, this looks promising. Oh, it's uh, some sort of a hump bar thing, I think. It's too dusty to blow. Now then, better get this lot down. Look out below. Whoops. <laughs> Patrick gave me such a fright. I thought it was my old dad for a minute. You know, off to play in the Greendale Brass Band. Do you know you're the very image of him? Now I remember, Pat, it was the tuba, that's what he played. I tell you what, you know you're welcome to it. Why don't you learn to play it? You know, we could have a new band in Greendale. Real live music for the fate. Well, uh, I might do that. <laughs> Seems the right sort of size for me, big and boomy. Better than that little old bugle I had when I was a lad in the scouts. Thanks, Granny Dryden. Very kind of you. Splinter, I should think. Oh, he's back. Mm, this filter needs cleaning. What do you reckon to this, Ted? Oh, you stop! Well, Ted. I reckon it wants a spot of something before it gives me headache, but. Let's try a drop of oil. <laughs> it's good stuff, this. It's a bit overpowered, Pat. Here, try some of these rags down its throttle. Thanks, Ted. I'd best be on my way now. Bye, Pat. Oh, dear. She won't start, Ted. Nee, it's no good, Pat. I can't mend it just now. It needs a new plug. Oh, dear, Jess. How on earth are we going to deliver all our letters? I'll tell you what, Pat. You could take the post bus out. I can give you a lift into the village to pick it up. I think you'd better sit in back with that thing. I can't risk getting a blast from it when I'm driving. Young Jess can keep me company. Are you with us, Pat? Ready. And off they went. But Pat just couldn't resist having another toot on the tuba. Oh! Ouch! What was that? Poor PC Selby. He ended up in a heap on the road. Pat was so busy puffing and blowing that he didn't see him. They passed Alf Thompson on his tractor. Ouch! What was that? Sounds like a tire blowing. What a noise! <laughs> Hog. Here we are, and a good thing too, Pat. You and your blooming tuber. <laughs> Shouldn't be allowed to make a noise like that. Terrible rumpus.
Pat was on his way again. At Thompson Ground, Jess thought he would stay somewhere quiet. But there was no one about. So Pat thought he'd have just one more try to get music from his tuba. <laughs> What's going on out here? What was that terrible noise? Sorry, Dorothy. It was only me trying to make music. Music, Pat? It sounded more like a bomb going off. I never heard the likes of it. Dear me, there must be somewhere I can practice without frightening everyone. Quiet enough here. Nobody about. Hmm, nice and shady. <sighs> Just imagine if I could. Really, really could play the tuba. We could have a great time making music like the old days with the village band. I would practice every day so I could join and play, and I'd try to make a very lovely sound. I'm so lucky that I found this lovely tune. Now I've got a chance to try my hand With my practice every day I'd soon be proud to say That I can make a really lovely, really proper sound Putting up the music, we must get to know the score Think what we can play Oh, our music will be sure to have a beat it would make a sound sure to give a richer sound no mistake would make the sound complete it's lucky that i found this lovely tube now i've got a chance to try my hand with my practice every day i'd soon be proud to say that i can make a really lovely really proper sound I'll try to make a really lovely, really proper sound. Phew, I must have dropped off. Now then, let's have one more go at this tube. Miss Hubbard was busy in her garden. Oh! oh dear, my prize blooms. What was that? Morning, Miss Hubbard. A parcel for you. Did you hear that dreadful noise, Pat? What do you think it was? Um, well, <laughs> I couldn't rightly say, Miss Hubbard. Uh, I'll have to dash. Lots of tube, I mean, letters today. Bye. Well, I never in all my days. Later that evening, P.C. Selby was out and about making inquiries. He called at the church. Evening, Reverend. I wonder if you can help me with my inquiries. It's about these strange noises. There have been reports from all over Greendale. Some folks think it might be intruders from outer space. 
Even I, an officer of the law, was thrown from my bike by a loud noise and a vibration in the air. Um, yes, officer. This requires some thought. You know what the Bible says, I suppose? Make a loud noise and rejoice. Dear heavens, what's that? That's it, Reverend. Dreadful, I'd call it. I'll go and investigate. Stay here, Reverend, and if I'm not back in five minutes, allow me to join you, officer. Now, Reverend, this is a job for the constabulary. Oh, but I insist. Two heads are better than one. And besides, I know my way around the churchyard in the dark. Now, Reverend, we must go quietly or we'll never catch it. Lord, defend us. Careful, Reverend. We're close. Maybe I should fetch help. No time for that. Aha! I can see the culprit. A mysterious shape in the gloom. Look, over there. Good heavens, it's Pat. Pat? Hello, Reverend. Hello, PC Selby. What's all this about, Pat? Well, it's, it's, it's me tuba. Most commendable. He wants to make music. Oh, yeah, but you didn't fall off your bike, did you? I'll have a word with Major Forbes. He can teach you, Pat. He played something like it in the army. It's time to get ready for the fate. Ted Glenn's fixing the bunting. Pat's giving him a hand. Everybody helped. PC Selby came to keep an eye on things. He soon had his hands full. Whatever are these dummies for, Pat? They're for the knock the hat off stall. As well as helping with the preparations for the fate, Pat had his rounds to do. There were some letters for Thompson Ground. Dorothy was making jam to sell at the fate. Morning, Mrs. Thompson. Uh, I'll put these letters here. Bye. Bye, Pat. And in between, he had his tuba lessons at Major Forbes. Ready now? A one, two, three. Good man. At last it's time for the fate. Pat's collecting the children from the school. Not forgetting the teacher, Mr Pringle. It'll be a real squash. Roll up. Three balls for five B. Try your luck. Knock all the hats off and win a prize. Come on, Charlie Pringle, have a go. Roger. Off. Off. I won, I won. First prize and all. Oh, uh, thanks. Did you hear that dreadful noise? I think the old record player's given up the ghost, Reverend. Let's just check these leads. Hmm, looks all right. This one seems okay, Ted. It's your old valves, Reverend. They've gone pop. And you can't get this type now. Then that's the end of the music. Oh, but we've always had music at the fete. Ever since I was a young lass and won the clog dance competition. Well, this won't play again, that's for sure. I don't know what else we can do. Hold on. I've got an idea. Uh, Miss Hubbard, uh, could I have a word? 
I wonder where they're up to. Heading for Miss Hubbard's? Yes, that's where Pat stopped. And here's Peter Fogg on his motorbike. Peter's giving them a hand. What's this for? It's for the fate, said Pat. Mind how you go, Pat. How about bringing your guitar and joining in? Ye champion, said Peter. The piano jangled a bit on the way back. What's happening? Look, a piano. Gently now. Uh, oops. Oh, do be careful. It's a good job it's on wheels. Stop. That'll do. Here's Peter with his guitar. All right, Major. Good man. Here's an A. I say, could I just borrow one of these? Thank you so much. All ready now? Ready when you are, Major. By the right. Quick. March. Um, I mean, uh, all together now. Uh, one, two, three. me in mind of the days when I was a lass. <laughs> Isn't it just grand?